Good afternoon, everyone, and thank you once again for tuning in to Soldiers for the Cross. I am Randy Jones, your host, and thank you so much once again for tuning in. Uh, before we get in to our uh, session three of Dream Big with Mr. Bob Goff, I want to first and foremost tell everyone our heartfelt prayers are with each and every one uh, that has been devastated by Hurricane uh, Helene, uh, Florida and Georgia and the Carolinas, the Tennessee, uh, even moving up into parts of Kentucky, um, as I'm made aware of now. And we just, we pray God's comfort I mean, the devastation, the loss of homes, businesses, and I know that's easy for people to say, but truly, you know, the fact that you have survived this and God got you out of harm's way, those who followed the evacuations and were able to get away, uh, thank you so much, and um, we just pray comfort for you and peace and for the first responders that are now going in. Um, it's my understanding currently that there are about 40 fatalities to date, uh, possibly more. And our prayers are with the families of those that have lost their lives in this. I, I could never pretend to even fathom what these families are going through with this loss. But as Christians, we know we serve a mighty God and we know that he will lift us out of these situations emotionally. Uh, you know, time is gonna be of the essence here in healing, but our prayers are with you and God love each and every one of you. So, I wanted to say that uh, this has just been, September's been a crazy month. Um, and it's just been in the United States, different parts of the world, different things going on. And we just, we know that we serve a God that is in complete control. I know sometimes it seems like he's not, but if you could just even fathom the fact if God was not in control, what kind of shape would this world be in currently? All right, so again, this is, I'm Randy Jones, and this is Soldiers for the Cross. And for the last uh, two weeks, we have been going through Bob Goff's uh, session and his Bible study guide in Dream Big. Now, some people have reached out wanting to know about uh, possibly purchasing this. You know, hey, Randy, you know, uh, exactly what website can I go to? Well, I could, I could give you the different websites that you could go to and uh, get the book for yourself to read through, study at home. Uh, but I thought I would do this. Everybody, <laughs> everybody knows Amazon. So, if you go to Amazon, uh, if you have Prime or just standard Amazon, uh, here it is. It is on Amazon. Looks like it runs about $8.86. Uh, this is the Dream Big. And the funny part was people were like, hey, I went and found this book. And this Bible study was originally started back in 2020. You know, this thing's uh, 15 years old. And I was like, yeah, but you know what? 15 years ago versus today, has sin changed? No. Uh, so this book is just so relevant in any particular time. And uh, we love the fact that you know, people can actually order it, sit down, read it, you know, in their spare time. Uh, now, to get the videos, the uh, five DVD set, 
you can. Um, I think there's a way of going through Amazon and actually getting a code to download to where you can watch the videos. Uh, I did try looking on YouTube. I did not find the videos to this Dream Big session on YouTube. Um, I know through some of the Christian websites where if your church orders devotionals and stuff through them, you can get the five uh, DVD set through there. And as well as it does come, as ours did, it comes with a code where you can go online and uh, look the session up. Uh, generally, uh, as you can tell the way that I do it here. The code comes in handy if we are putting it up live for you to watch. So that's just wanted to uh, inform our viewers of that. If you were a couple of you were curious about getting the book, reading it, because there are parts in this book that unfortunately we don't go all the way through. Uh, you know, there's in between session reading and uh, in between session questionnaires. So if this is a book that you would like to start a plan on, by all means, you know, like I said, go to Amazon and find it, order it for yourself and get it in. You will not be disappointed. Okay. The, I have really enjoyed this. So we are this week in uh, session three properly named Clear the Path. And uh, in this session, get my binoculars on. Mr. Goff starts by saying clearing the path means identifying limiting beliefs and then moving them aside so you can get at those beautiful big ambitions that God has for you. All right. Uh, we're going to move on to his welcome for session three here. When we start to engage in the process of allowing ourselves to dream big, we often run up against the brick wall of our limiting beliefs. These are the things we've been told and have chosen to believe about ourselves based on our past experiences. Other warnings and our worst fears. Amen to that. We cling to those assumptions as fact and drag them along with us through our life. Yet many of these limitations are self-imposed. We believe what our parents, teachers, coaches, and others have said about us at a particular place and time. We set those beliefs in stone when actually they should be more like sandcastles that have long since washed away. As we begin to look at the reasons why we think we can't pursue our dreams, we will discover new paths through places that we previously assumed were impassable. In this respect, other people are usually more willing to help us than we might believe. In fact, their big dreams can intersect with our own to create beautiful bridges that unite what once appeared to be separate and unique ambitions. We can share our needs and our resources and work with others to achieve what we could never create alone. Clearing the path to make room for our big dreams also requires us to face down our fears and take some leaps of faith. We will have to get out of our comfort zones and also likely have to experience discomfort, inconvenience, frustration, and disappointment. In other words, we will have to pay a price and make some hard choices. But if we clear the path by challenging old beliefs and removing false assumptions, we will have more than enough room to blaze a trail and to see our big dreams come to life. Wow. If, if that's not a huge statement in itself, you know, just, just a quick, short testimony here in relation to this. Um, when I first got saved, and I'm going to date myself here, 
but I was first saved back in 1984. And within a year and a half period, I want to say, you know, well, let's, let's start with the first few weeks into the first couple of months. I had this ambition, man, I want to spread the gospel. I am on fire about this. And I just want to pursue God. I want to, you know, I took the literal David, a man after God's own heart. But as a new Christian, the one thing that I never considered and, and was naive to was the rejection of others. And by rejection of others, I mean direct Christians. People that I thought were there that were going to support me. People that I thought were going to lift me up and, and say, yeah, man, you've got this calling on your life. Go for it. You know, and within probably uh, less than a year period, I walked away from it. I walked away from all of it. The ambitions that I had, the dreams I had, that that what I wanted to do for God. Because a new Christian, I'm on fire and, you know, I'm just ready to get out here and, you know, tell the rest of the world, hey, how do you guys not know about this? And then, you know, as the great C.S. Lewis once said, reality come riding in. The dreams and ambitions I, were, I was chasing, I had not given myself enough time in the gospel to mature. I had not given myself enough time in prayer to build and strengthen the relationship I needed with God to even look at those dreams and say, I can make those a reality. Because what happened immediately is what happens to all of us. You come to, you come to Christ. You're a new Christian. You, the old man has went away. Yeah, there's the, the habits, you know, whether it's the swearing, the temptations or whatever, they're still going to be there. But the devil is going to enhance them. The, the enemy is going to enhance it by a thousand. And he's going to use those closest to us that may have their doubts and concerns about us, those that knew us prior to our conversion to Christ. Perfect example. When Paul came to Christ, the disciples, I'm telling you, the disciples could not trust that guy any farther than they could pick him up and throw him because his reputation preceded him. They knew who Paul was. You are Saul. You know, you are the high prosecutor out of Jerusalem. You come after people like us. You know, now you're trying to tell us that you're now saved, born again, a follower of Jesus Christ, and now all of a sudden you want to lead us or join us? But Paul was mature. Paul had a direct intervention with Jesus Christ on the road to Damascus. Our direct intervention is at that altar with Jesus Christ. When we lay down everything that we used to be in the old person, that is our road to Damascus. Young Christians... Let me tell you something. When you get saved, you get born again, you kneel at that altar or you kneel at a chair, you may kneel in the bedroom of your house and accept Christ. The dreams that the Holy Spirit starts bubbling up in you, the ambitions to serve, to minister, to spread the gospel, 
please, please go to your church and get yourself surrounded by God-fearing, Bible-believing Christians who are going to lift you up. My mistake was, in essence, I wanted to be in the popular crowd of Christians rather than being in the devoted crowd of Christians. And for that, I paid the price. And let me tell you, it was uh, almost 24 years, I, almost 25 years before I came back to Christ and turn my life back over to him again. And now for years, I have looked back and sometimes I think, well, that's a lot of wasted time. And with the sin that had came into my life over the years, there was really not a, a pathway that I knew of. The ambition I once had I still wanted to serve. I still want to spread the gospel. But what's God going to do with me now? Hey, God, the original plan you had for me, is it still there? And the Heavenly Father, as he always is, never left. I got use for you. You know, at one time, you may have been the nose on the body of Christ. Now you're the fingers. <laughs> so I want to give you that. Uh, if you're new to being saved, keep yourself rooted, keep yourself grounded, and keep yourself in contact with Christians. Iron sharpens iron, the word tells us. Okay, the world will not sharpen you. Um... Uh, TV will not sharpen you. You know, you, you say, well, I don't have to physically go to a church to be saved. No, but how long do you plan on being saved? Is it temporary or is it eternal? Because if it's eternal, you want to be with God's people, learning with God's people, studying with God's people, interacting with God's people, and doing what God's people do. If you want to be saved part-time, you go to church on Sunday, after the bar on Saturday, after uh, a hard week at work, Monday through Friday, uh, after intermittent relationships or whatever that you have convinced yourself is okay, you could be saved part-time. But that Sunday may never come again for you. And then what happens? In between your part-time visits, you could go out to meet eternity. So I'm telling you from experience, keep yourself rooted in the word. Start your prayer life. It's not going to be perfect. You're not going to have a clue when you first start building your prayer life what to say. But the Holy Spirit says, do not worry in that moment because I will intercede for you because I know your heart so I can tell the Father what you feel in your heart. And then as you mature and give yourself the time to mature, but do it in the presence of working with other Christians around you. Uh, I have been very blessed with the mentorship that I have had uh, over the years, more so over the last 12 to 13 years, the people who have come in and just, uh, when you pick up the phone and call them, they're there. If you need to talk, they're there. If you need to go have coffee, they are there. If you're being tempted and you need someone to walk you through overcoming it, they are there. And that's what you need. You know, most, even drug rehabilitation, alcohol rehabilitation programs, they assign you a sponsor. The person, when you start feeling that temptation, you pick up the phone and call them. You know, we've run the uh, Veterans Crisis Line. 
on this, you know, Soldiers for the Cross. This is a veteran-based ministry. Veterans have access 24-7. You know, they, they have made it simpler over the years. Thank God. You know, it, just 988 and then press 1. And you can talk to somebody. But you can also contact your local church. You know, contact a friend, contact a buddy. You know, as long as we keep ourselves rooted and amongst people who are going to build us up. If you got people in your life, just a session to explain to us. Sometimes you need to get people out of the way. I've I done a episode here about a year and a half ago, throwing people overboard. You know, just like uh, Jonah on the ship. Tons of turmoil. They had, oh, they figured it out. <laughs> right there is why we're going through this. So they threw him overboard. You know, sometimes you have people in your life, you don't boot them out forever. You just kick them out of the areas that you are trying to grow stronger in if they are tearing you down and becoming a hindrance. So, okay. Now to get back into our dream big session here, we are in session three and we're going to move on. There is, uh, I'm going to give you this one question. If you want to write it down, that's fine and answer it honestly in your own time. What's the one thing that distracts you the most on any given day? Now, by distraction, I mean you're going to do a Bible devotion. You're going to start a prayer time. Uh, you're going to start a prayer time for the needs of your home or your church or the people around you. And for some reason, you just can't ever get it kicked off. So what's distracting you? What is keeping you? Is it kids? Spouse? Work? Want to sleep in too long? Uh, I, I know people that will literally set their alarm clock for 10 minutes before they have to get up and be to work. And I can tell you, Working with some of these people, you know they got <laughs> they got up ten minutes before they came in. So uh, the question again for you is: one thing that distracts you the most on any given day from starting that daily commitment to God now that you're saved? Okay, so think about it, answer it honestly. That's what this entire book is about. You, you want to be honest with yourself because God knows your heart. Once you're honest with yourself, it's easy to take those next steps. So we're going to move on and um, look at uh, some scripture here. Our scripture comes from uh, Luke 1038, verse 42. Or I'm sorry, Luke chapter 10, verses 38 through 42. And this is at the home of Martha and Mary. As Jesus and his disciples were on their way, he came to a village where a woman named Martha opened her home to him. She had a sister called Mary who sat at the Lord's feet listening to what he said. But Martha was distracted by all the preparations that had to be made. She came to him and asked, Lord, don't you care that my sister has left me to do all the work by myself? Tell her to help me. Jesus responds, Martha, Martha, the Lord answered, you are worried and upset about many things, but few things are needed, or indeed only one. Mary has chosen what is better, and it will not be taken away from her. Wow. Martha, Mary has decided what she wants to do today, and she will not be distracted from it. She is listening to the Lord speak to her as she sits at his feet in ministry. So what's distracting you today? Okay, we're moving on. Uh, now, here's a quick question for you, another one to uh, respond to. 
Who do you identify with the most in this scene, Mary or Martha? Do you identify with the one that's always preparing, always, you know, you always have that person that you wonder when, when do they sleep or if they do sleep, do they just, they go a hundred miles an hour till they get home. And then there's a certain cutoff time, say 10 or 10 30. They just walk to their bedroom. The clothes fly off of them. The covers fly on them and they're dead for eight hours. You know, that person, it's like they're caffeinated 24 seven. Or are you the person that says, I'm getting up in the morning. It's a beautiful day. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you for this beautiful day. I'm on my way to work. Look at the traffic jam, Lord. I'm going to turn on some music, some worship music. I'm going to sit here in this traffic jam. I'm going to cruise. You know why, Lord? Because you gave me this job when I prayed for it. This job was an answer to prayer, so I know I'm covered. I know you're going to help me get to work safely. You're going to help me get to work as I get there and uh, everything's going to be great the rest of the day. Which person are you? Are you the Mary or the Martha? Again, that scripture is Luke chapter 10 verses 38 through 42. And um, if you decide that you want to take some time and Relax and read it. By all means, do it. I mean, that's what we're here for, right? Okay, moving on. When have you resented others for not helping you attend to details that had to be done? How did you feel about what was expected of you compared to what was expected of them? I mean, that's cut and drive that's that's a workplace scenario a sibling scenario mom and dad why do i have to cut the grass trim the hedges and little bro gets to go to baseball practice and then afterwards if practice goes real good while i'm raking the grass tilling the garden he gets to eat ice cream Did that sound like a life experience? It was. And little bro, if you're watching, yes, it was. But you know what? That's okay. Because you know what I love doing at 55 years old? Putting my headset on, listening to some worship and praise music, getting on my riding mower, and just cruising around the yard mowing. Man, it's relaxing. Having that time with God on the mower, nothing better. So don't always think because you seem like you're the one pulling all the load that it's never going to come back to bless you because believe me, it will when you least expect it. Okay, we are going to move into our video session of Mr. Bob Goff, and session three, which is called Clear the Path. And here is Mr. Bob Goff. Welcome back everybody. We're in session three and we're talking about your dreams, your ambitions. We've covered some ground. We talked about who are you? Where are you? What do you want? We've talked about uh, exploring opportunities, finding these absurd expectations, vetting them, comparing them not to each other, but to your other ambitions. Looking at scripture and saying, is this things that, that Jesus said would outlast you? We talked about who is gonna be in the capsule with you, who's talking into your ear, who's in the capsule for the ride and putting Jesus in the window and continuing to make lots of small movements towards him. 
What I want to talk about now is to clear the path. And let me tell you what I mean by that. What we have, you can think of them as limiting beliefs. They're beliefs that we've uh, gathered along the way about how our life works. I was told when I was young, goths aren't good at math. And it turns out they're right. <laughs> <laughs> but what if that kept me away from being an engineer? What if that kept me away from working for NASA because somebody told me goths aren't good at math? My uh, dad, he loves me, I love him, and because he's a good dad, he doesn't want to see me get hurt. We walked around in the Sierra Nevada mountains and, and he told me that you have to step way over these logs because if you don't, the rattlesnake will bite you on the leg. <laughs> you guys, I am 60 years old. You know how many rattlesnakes I've seen? Zero, <laughs> and that's rounding up. What I have is this limiting belief, and it came because my dad loved me. He didn't want me to get bit, or he didn't want to suck the venom out, I'm not sure. But he wanted beautiful things in my life, and so now I'm afraid of logs. I see a twig on the ground and I jump a foot. One of the things that happened to you along the way that you uh, picked up are these limiting beliefs about how deep you could go in a relationship. Let's say your parents had split up at some time. You might have formed a limiting belief that if I actually give my heart away, eventually somebody will leave me. If I'm actually vulnerable, did you have a friend who burned you? Did you have a boyfriend or a girlfriend at some time in high school and things went too far too fast and you said, I'm never doing that in relationships again. And I wonder if we're missing out on some of the beautiful things and expressions of love and caring and affection because we developed a limiting belief. Clearing the path means identifying what those are and then moving them aside so you can get at these beautiful big ambitions that God has for you. I have a drawer in my house. It's got all these keys in it. I've got keys to stuff I don't even know what the key goes to. But I wanted to keep the key because I knew there might be a time where I'd find a lock that I couldn't find a key for and I'd go back to the drawer. You know how many times I've gone back to the drawer? Zero. <laughs> but I've accumulated all these keys and you have too. You have these things that you accumulated, beliefs about yourself, and if we wanna carve this new little groove, if we wanna go Grand Canyon on it, you're need, gonna need to do a little bit of housekeeping to get there. We pick these things up. We come by them honestly, it just happens. That's what happens. You go around the sun enough times, it happens. One of the ambitions that I had when I was in high school, I wanted to sail across the Pacific Ocean. <laughs> Here's the problem, I didn't have a boat. <laughs> we all have impediments. But I finally got one in college. A buddy and I, we got scraped together some money. We got this boat. We entered the Transpac race and, and we sailed all the way to Hawaii. It's pretty cool sailing to Hawaii. You know what's a drag? Sailing back. <laughs> and it's like kind of a round trip ticket. So we left the Olamoi Marina in Hawaii and I looked back and I saw we were trailing a little bit of kelp behind the keel because the sailboats have really tall masts and big sails, which makes you go fast, but they have really long keels that are filled with lead to keep you upright. And when kelp gets around the keel and the more water you pass over, the more kelp you collect. I saw this piece of kelp. I thought we got it off the boat in Hawaii. You guys, we passed underneath the San Francisco Golden Gate Bridge. I looked back to see the bridge, you know what I saw? A piece of kelp. I had carried that piece of kelp 2,750 miles across the Pacific Ocean without even knowing it. And you know what? It slowed us down. That's what happens when you have a limiting belief. What you gotta do is clear away the kelp, the stuff you've just picked up along the way. I've got been around the sun 60 times, maybe you've been around it 20. You got some kelp and here's how you back down the kelp. You go into the wind, you push the sail back and you actually let the wind put you backward. And for the first time, the kelp will float free from the keel. It'll drop to the bottom. Backing down the kelp might be something that you do each morning. Some people in faith communities call that a quiet time. I haven't had a quiet time in 25 years, 
mine are really loud. <laughs> I'm thinking about all the stuff I learned the day before. I'm checking it against scripture to see if it's really true or if it just sounds right. And if it just doesn't sound right, if it actually squares with scripture, I'll talk about it. And if it doesn't square from, with scripture, you won't hear from me again. It's backing down the kelp. And clearing the path means backing down the kelp in your life. But it isn't enough just to back down all the kelp constantly. I know a couple of people who have been going in reverse their whole life. <laughs> they're actually not getting much done. Their keel is clear, but they're not getting anywhere. And if you can identify with that because fear has kept you there, that's a limiting belief. Go down that rabbit hole. Do a little spelunking. That's what uh, you do when you explore a cave. You get to the bottom of the cave, you turn on the light, and you say, what's there? And where did it come from? Once you've figured out where some of these limiting beliefs came from, come up with a way to overcome those. And you overcome a limiting belief with a very keen sense of purpose and a ton of action. It isn't just deciding, plotting a new course. That's not gonna get you anywhere. That's gonna get a line on a paper. It's actually untying from the dock and saying, let's go do this thing. We started many years ago a school in uh, Mogadishu, Somalia. And if you follow the news, Somalia is a place with lots of upset. There's no government, there hasn't been for decades. Uh, there's no army, there's no military, there's no police. There's just a lot of people with machine guns, but there's a lot of kids that are denied an opportunity for a school. And so for some friends and I, landed in Mogadishu. We didn't wait for an invitation. We're here. God's nuts about kids. We're, we're pretty good at starting schools. You find an ambition. You wet it with an opportunity or you make the opportunity and you land. I thought ahead. I called these security guys and I said, could you pick us up? Because it's pretty sporty. <laughs> it's Mogadishu. Could you pick us up and give us a ride to the hotel? Now we've stayed in three hotels in Mogadishu all three have been blown up. That's crazy. It's a country that has a lot of upset. Well, these guys arrived to pick us up. This is our first trip to Mogadishu. And they put us in this car with tinted windows. And in front of it, there's a, another truck with a bunch of guys with machine guns. What I learned later, you do not want to be the guy in the car with the tinted windows. Because <laughs> that's who everybody goes after. And the way they do it, if you're driving through these streets in Mogadishu, there's like bullet holes everywhere. There's mortar rounds, like the pock marks from that. It's like a level of Call of Duty. <laughs> I'm like, I've been here, hang a left. We're driving down this road and a car cuts us off. And that's what they do if they're trying to get you. And the driver of our car said, this is not good. <laughs> <laughs> and you guys, there are two things you do not want to hear in Somalia. Like, I'm the captain now, or this is really bad. And, and the guys in the pickup truck started shooting. And everybody, and you guys, all I could think to say was, yikes! <laughs> and I know it doesn't sound big and deep and theological, but it's big, it's deep, and it's theological. If you want to get after your big ambitions, if you want to carve this new groove and go Grand Canyon on it, if you want to make headway on these things, you got to stop living in the middle of comfortable. And I'm comfortable. I've got a car, i got a house, i got a wife. And comfortable people don't need Jesus. Desperate people need Jesus. You want to get after your ambitions, you figure out what's holding you back. You clear the decks with that thing, and then you take action on it. There's a great verse, it's Philippians 2.20, and it's Paul talking about Timothy behind his back. This is what he says, I don't have anybody like Timothy. He's a guy who takes a genuine interest in the people around him. Boy, wouldn't that be great if that was said of us, that as we're pursuing our own ambitions, that we would actually find some of our ambitions and the path towards them by taking a genuine interest in the other people's ambitions. Look around the room. Those are your other people. Take an interest in their ambition and, and engage them in where they're at. Find people along the way. You want to find the fastest way towards your ambitions? Look for opportunities to serve other people that are sometimes in a whole lot of need. 
It was a couple years ago and it was in Detroit. And, and there was a truck driver driving his 18 wheeler down the highway. And as he passed under this overpass, he saw a young man standing on the edge of the overpass. Looked like he was gonna jump. Now I know that truck driver had places to be. He was probably running late for as many appointments as you and I have. But instead of continuing on his way, you know what he did? He stopped his truck underneath that overpass. He didn't stop there. He got on the radio. He called every single trucker going in any direction on that highway, told them what was happening. They took an interest in this kid and 13 trucks lined up underneath that bridge. And this is what they were saying. If you jump, you are not falling far. That's the Christian community. That is people taking a genuine interest, believing in their faith, rolling it out and taking action. And they do that because it's an expression of their faith. They don't want applause. They just want to show up. They're self-aware enough to know that their biggest ambitions will be found in serving other people. And what it, it, it takes is a combination of taking action and then being obedient to what God said to do. It's crazy. I don't know if you followed what's been going on in Afghanistan, and it's a bunch. Uh, the Taliban won't let little girls learn how to read or write. You know why? They're girls. Malali has said it so well. There's nothing that scares a terrorist more than a girl with a book. And, and so we read about this, and I don't know anybody in Afghanistan. Do you? <laughs> so get this. I got on WhatsApp. I met this guy. <laughs> he said he's from Afghanistan. I'm like, awesome. I'm looking for somebody. And so we started corresponding back and forth, but I don't know what team he's playing for. And you cannot be talking to the wrong team or you go to jail. So we went to the friends on the East Coast that actually know who's who in Afghanistan. And here's what they said. He's a good guy. I'm like, got any more detail? Crickets. So do you know what we did? A couple of friends and I, we flew to Afghanistan to meet him. <laughs> What a stupid idea. We got off the plane in Kabul and we get a text message from him. This is what it says. We can't meet you at the airport. <laughs> shoot. <laughs> Actually, I didn't say shoot. <laughs> I'm taking baby steps. But he said what you need to do is leave the airport grounds and start walking through Kabul and people I do not blend. He said, after a while, you're gonna to come to a car, the last number on the license plate is a seven, get in the car. Now, how many of you guys would say, I'm out of here? But I don't know. I, just see these ambitions, remind yourself about why you're doing what you're doing. If you know who you are, where you are, what you want, you know why you're doing what you're doing, you'll take a walk. And so we found this car. I mean, like what could possibly go wrong? We got in the car, we started driving around. Do you know what? This guy we're talking to is way up in the government in Afghanistan. What he wanted to know is this. He wanted to know if we do what he told us to do. Because if we do what he told us to do, he'd start a girls' school in Afghanistan. And we did. You know what? That's what God wants us to do. He just wants us to do what he told us to do. Let your ambitions point you back towards scripture. They say, what are the things Jesus told us to do? I don't care what your opinions are. Opinions are like ears. Everybody's got a couple of them. Quit arguing about all this stuff. Do what he told you to do. And it's to love everybody. Don't start vetting people like you're a bouncer. Everybody gets in towards Jesus. Let everybody in. And there's something beautiful that'll happen. You're gonna get more and more clarity on your ambitions as you do if you don't get distracted. And that's where I wanna finish our session on because your distractions are getting in the way of you pursuing these beautiful ambitions that you have. I'm like that dog in up, you know, he says like squirrel. <laughs> don't get distracted. Satan doesn't need to destroy you. He just needs to distract you. And some of you are living incredibly distracted lives. You're looking at your iPhones constantly. You guys, that is a distract. That is not the first time an Apple did us in. I, what I wanna do is, is identify the distractions that are getting you off message and put them to one side. And we all have these crazy little picadillos. You know one for me? Toothpicks. <laughs> I hate them. And I, I grew up in a family where after like dinner, the toothpicks would come out and it would be like 
oral hygiene time. And I had this unreasonable belief that a piece of beef would come flying out of somebody's mouth and hit me in the forehead. And so I've got this thing about toothpicks. Do you know what's at every table in the country of Uganda? Toothpicks. <laughs> It's like an episode of Fear Factor. I'll lie to people. I'm like, look, it's the president, and ditch the toothpicks. But these have become a distraction. For some people, it'll be the craziest thing. I've got a friend who uh, cannot have different vegetables touching one another on the plate. Is that crazy? Another friend, if they get brushed up against on their left arm, they have to tap themselves on the right arm. I am not kidding. There's this friend I've got that if the toilet paper comes out underneath the roll rather than over, you know who you are. Like, they, they just, they lose it. Man, that's just weird. What's happening is your distractions are getting in the way of you making progress on your ambitions. So figure out what's been distracting you. And here's the deal. Don't let anything but Jesus distract you. And it's being so clear on why you're doing what you're doing. Having such beauty in the ambition that you're pursuing, knowing why you're doing it, that you'll live a life undistracted. And it's then that you take these steps. One last thing that I, I wanna talk about. When I was young, my, my dad smoked. He smoked all the time. And I was really concerned, because I read on the side of the cigarettes, it said like from the Surgeon General, like cigarettes will kill you. And I was a young kid, but I'm like, well, that sounds like a really bad idea. The name of the Surgeon General was a guy we called Coop. And you know what I did in junior high school? I wrote to Coop. I wrote to the Surgeon General. I said, my name is Bob Goff. My dad smokes. And, and I want you to write him a letter and tell him to stop smoking. You know what happened? A couple weeks later, a letter came from the Surgeon General of the United States of America addressed to my dad. You know what the letter said? Stop smoking. And he did. I'm telling you, take action. Find an opportunity. Be undistracted. Go Grand Canyon on your beautiful ambitions. That's where it gets good. Wow. Now that was some good words from a good man. Uh, so much to take in there and it is just amazing the way he presents this to us so um, I want to get in real quick and give you some discussion uh, material uh, question one what are some limiting beliefs that have held you back from taking risk in pursuit of your own dreams where did these beliefs come from? Have they influenced the decisions you have made in pursuit of your ambitions? Okay. Uh, what are the biggest distractions cluttering up your time, energy, and attention each day? Wow. That, that would, that could be a long list for some of us. What are what are the biggest distractions cluttering up your time, energy, and attention each day? Now, what impact do these distractions have on bringing your dreams to life? I would say, knowing now what I didn't know then, about seven-tenths of most of my daily distractions were hindering my ambitions. Because it's kind of like eating peanuts during a movie. You're not really hungry, but the movie's on. It's an hour long. It just keeps you occupied. Or you skip the movie, you go out in the yard, and you build that smoker you always wanted, right? Okay, uh, here's another one for you. How does remembering Jesus example in the Bible of serving others help you to prioritize your pursuit of your God-given dreams? Remember, Jesus could have kept to himself. Jesus could have prevented anything that happened to him. But he knew he had come to earth, was born of a virgin. He, he knew he walked 
Every experience that Christ had upon this earth, he knew was for a purpose. And his, uh, his end pursuit was salvation for the world, a new covenant between heaven and man. So what, what is our, uh, how do we prioritize our life? Do we thank God for our homes, our family, our possessions that we have in the homes? Do we thank God for them? Or do we say, I work very hard to get all that. And we take all the credit. Because if you're taking all the credit, you're not actually prioritizing how you got to where you're at. Because as a Christian, the Lord put you on paths that were going to be prosperous, but they they were to be prosperous so you could become a steward of the things you have to glorify him with. Not so you could become a possessor of the things you have and go back to the age of two and say mine. Okay. Um, when was the last time you rearranged your schedule or turned down a request in order to keep the path of your dreams clear? Sometimes it's just okay to say, no, I'm not, I, I don't want to do that today. Because if you have a dream of something that you're really wanting to do, and you're a yes person all the time, believe me, the enemy knows that the word yes can be a good thing, especially when it's distracting you. You know, there may be a church concert a church play, uh, a church softball game, you know, and you're like, hey, I want to get closer to the people in my church. I want to get to know them. I want to hang out some. And devil's like, yeah, but this group's coming out of retirement and they're playing over here tonight. And this may be the last time you ever get to see them. Yeah, but maybe the last time I ever get to see and interact with these people from church, you know? So again, do we rearrange or, or are we the yes person all the time? Are we the person that, uh, we stress ourselves out by trying to juggle too many things, too many irons in the fire continuously. Believe me, I, I, I can vouch for it. I, I, I can vouch for juggling the business, family, kids, um, uh, volleyball games, uh, being here, being at meetings, you know, and sometimes before you get to that point of boiling over and just wanting to throw in the towel on everything, back up and look at the whirlwind around you. Be inside the eye of the storm and look at all the debris just flying around you continuously. And just start looking and, and picking pieces and going, you know, that's, that's not really what I need right now. I, you know, I, I, I don't need this anymore. Just pluck it out and get rid of it. And concentrate, focus on what God is truly trying to say to you in your life. Final question. Who are the people currently encouraging, supporting, and fueling the pursuit of your dreams? That's very important. How are you also helping them fulfill their ambitions? Again, it goes back to iron sharpens iron. When you are in a group of like-minded people as Christians, you will grow stronger. You know, uh, the Bible gives us illustrations where if you're by yourself and you fall, you can't really help yourself get up if you're hurt real bad. But if there's two of you, one can help the other up and then both of you can continue to travel. So I love these classes, uh, these sessions. I am so glad that you tuned in for them. Again, there are a lot more items 
on each one of these sessions. So again, if you want to get the book, um, you, you know, you, uh, as I told you before, if you want to get the book, you can switch over to Amazon and see it. Um, and it is available. Runs about eight dollars and eighty six cents uh, for shipping, or not shipping. I'm sorry for the cost. Uh, if you have Prime, it looks like it's free shipping. Doesn't say uh, anything really about shipping if you don't have Prime, but you know, get it, read it. You know, follow along with these. Uh, again, these videos are posted on YouTube um, at Soldiers for the Cross channel. They are on Facebook at Soldiers for the Cross. So you're welcome to follow along. You're welcome to comment on them. And um, following uh, session number five, our final session of Dream Big, um, I have all, I'm, I'm just, I'm in that mode. So you'll have to kind of excuse me, but uh, I already have another study in the makings and set up. So I, it'll be wonderful to present that to you once I get everything together and uh, get everything uh, how I want it so I can present it to you as a blessing. Uh, we'll be announcing that uh shortly after uh, session five of our Dream Big series. So again, this is Randy for Soldiers for the Cross. Thank you for tuning in. And like I said, these are recorded. So if you would like to see it, you can go to YouTube, uh, Soldiers for the Cross channel, and watch these uh, sessions on this series, Dream Big, with Mr. Bob Goff, or you can find it on our Facebook page, and please, whichever one you go to, leave us a message. Let us know who you are. Um, Facebook, if you have prayer requests, you can always uh, private message us through there, you know, with prayer requests. If, if it's something that you just want believers to engage in, you know, you can post it in the comments. And uh, we will definitely pray over that. And again, our thoughts and prayers are with all those who have been devastated by this hurricane. And uh, let's let's show each other what God's people are really like. I know Convoy of Hope is on the move everywhere in the South right now, and in in the areas that they can get the closest. I think last I heard, they're in Perry, Florida, uh, down there. So. Uh, this is a very, very worthwhile commitment. If you can donate Convoy of Hope, they do such an amazing work. Um, our connection here with Convoy of Hope is Pastor Scott Collier, and uh, he does amazing work with it. And if you would like for him uh, to visit your church, or a representative of Convoy of Hope to visit your church to give you more detail and information on this particular uh, charity, then please, you can reach out to him and he will put you in contact uh, with the people that you need to get a hold of, or you can go on their website, Convoy of Hope. So thank you so much, everyone, for tuning in. And just keep praying for us as this ministry goes forward. I can always use more prayer. Okay. And uh, as always, we are a veteran-based uh, organization here. And we pray for our veterans daily. And if you have a veteran in need of prayer, if you are a veteran in need of prayer, you know, please reach out to us. Uh, if you need someone to talk to, we will talk with you, you know, online. Um, if we can, we'll make communications available by phone with you. And as always, at the bottom of our screen, we have the Veterans Crisis Line. Do not be prideful. Okay, we love you. Your family loves you. Your friends love you. You are worth it every single day you are here. Okay. So don't let the bad days win. All right. We love you.
Thank you for watching. This is Randy with Soldiers for the Cross, and we will see you again next week here for session four of Dream Big.